Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part two of my PHP forum slash message board tutorial. If you didn't watch part one, definitely watch that, otherwise you will be completely confused. I'm going to try to do something different in this series of tutorials in that I'm going to use this not only to build a message board and show you how it's done, but also to show you a review of exactly how things are done. So what I'm going to do here first off is I'm going to jump back into the previous tutorial and here is the user part of that database. So what I did was I went in and I added first name and I added last name into this guy, something that wasn't there. And just to show you how to do that in MySQL, you type in alter, then you type in table and you type in users, which is the name of that. And then you type in add. And if I want to put a first name in, I did that. That's how you do it. And then follow that up with variable characters and I set that for 20. And actually, another thing I want to do is show you how to set things as null. So here we got last name set that it can be a null value. I want it to absolutely have to be in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and type in last name. And instead of add, I'm going to type in modify. And then what this is going to allow me to do is to come in here at the end and type in not null. So that's how you would set something to be not null or you could also set it to be null in MySQL. If you hit enter, and if I describe users, you're gonna see down here with last name that null is now marked for no. Token ID I'm gonna use sort of with sessions, so I wanna let that be null because sometimes it will not be there. And then active also is only going to be set if the person activates their account. So I want to allow that to be null. So there's the MySQL part. All right, now what I got to do is I'm going to create something called config msgbrd.php. And this is going to configure my whole entire database. So I'm going to take you through it bit by bit. So I'm going to type in PHP. And then what I want to do is I want to come in here and define a couple globals. So I'm gonna use MySQL admin, right like that. And let's define a couple other globals. And I'm also kind of trusting that you've seen my PHP tutorials before we proceed, because again, this is kind of a review. And then I'm gonna type in a password that I never use anywhere. And then here in my situation, this is gonna be local host, but in your situation, it's gonna be whatever your database is. And then I gotta define my name and the name of the database file is message board. So I got all those defined. Then I need to connect to the database. So I'm going to go if dbc is equal to my SQL connect. And then I'm going to plug in all of these things that I need, being the host, the user, and the password. And if that is true, then what I want to do, do another if statement, my SQL select underscore database. And this is where I put in my database name. And close that off. And if there is an error, I want to handle that error. So I'm going to go trigger error. Could not select the database. I'm just going to put that in there just for the heck of it. And then at the end of this, I could put MySQL underscore error. And you would do this during your testing phase, but you wouldn't do that whenever the thing is live. And then I want to exit out of the script if that occurs. That's if it was not able to connect. I'm going to close this other guy off. Then I'm going to go else. If some other error occurred, could not connect to my SQL. And again, I could put the SQL error, but I'm not going to do that right now. And then I want to exit out of the script if this occurs. And then I want to close that whole entire thing out. So that's the whole part there with connecting to the database itself. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function that's going to allow me to escape out any potentially dangerous information. And this is going to be stored in a secure location, of course, because it has the passwords and all that crazy stuff in it. So what I'm going to do is check to see if a function called MySQL real escape string exists. And this is how you would check if a function actually exists for you to be able to use it. And all this code's available on my website, by the way. And if it does exist, define a global, which is gonna be my connection. And then I'm gonna take any data that is sent to this function, and I'm gonna trim it, meaning I'm gonna get rid of the white space around it. And then out of habit, I've gotten this question a couple of times. Why? Because you're going to see a little bit later on that I strip tags out of my code before it ever even gets here. And then I also call strip tags on it. Um, you really don't have to do it. I do it out of habit. And what strip tags does is it deletes this and it deletes this and it will delete any characters between it. So a tag. It deletes tags. That's what it does. And then I want to close that out. I'm going to say else. If that function is not available, I'm going to put some space in here so you can see this. Then I'm going to call MySQL escape 
string, and again call trim to get rid of the white space around any data that is passed to it. All right, and then I'm going to perform strip tags on it again, just for the heck of it. I'm not going to hurt anything. And then after all of this has been done to this data, it's going to return it for use, and we will be able to trust that this data is safe after I do a lot of other security things. So this is the code that you use to connect to the database, and then this is the function that is going to help me escape out of any potentially dangerous code. And like I said, it's available at NewThinkTank.com. It's all free, of course. And over here on the right side of the screen, I've been ignoring this. This is the beginnings of what the registration page is going to look like. I know it's got awful ugly, but I'm trying to make it as simple as humanly possible, and then we can worry about what it looks like and pretty it up at a later date. And now I'm going to show you exactly what the header file is going to look like. And I'm going to be calling this header.html. And what this is going to allow me to do is to do a lot of my styling all in one place. You would use it on every single page. So I don't have to retype it in. So it's called header.html. And it's all PHP again. So I'm going to jump in there. PHP. And I'm going to start output buffering. And then I'm going to create a new session right like that. And if you haven't seen my session tutorial, definitely check that out. As this thing goes on, I'm going to explain some things, and some things are just too complicated to explain in one place. And then here is where I'm going to initialize the database. This is a link to that file that we just created and require once pretty much just takes all that text and just slams it right inside of here. And then this, I'm going to use a CAPTCHA system. And this is the location for that PHP file that's going to allow me to use the CAPTCHA system. So I want to go and plug both of those things inside of here. And here's the CAPTCHA system, by the way. And of course, I have a tutorial on setting up this stuff, too, if you haven't seen that. All right, so we set up the sessions. We set up the database and everything. So now what we're going to do is continue on with the rest of this information. And here I'm just going to plug in basic HTML information right inside of there. And I'm going to put all my styling inside of this guy. So I'm going to do some styling on the body. And I'm going to change the background color for the entire body to be white, as you can see on the right side of your screen. And that's all I'm going to do with the body right now. I'm going to have a header with an ID of header. And it's going to have a background color, as you can see on the right side of the screen. I know it's not pretty. It's not meant to be. It's meant to be as quick as possible. And I'm going to have the text be white and padding to be 20 pixels. Scroll that out. And then I'm going to do a little bit with the footer. Change the background color for it. Text color, again, is going to be white. And the padding, I'm just going to have it be 20 pixels as well. This is all CSS code. My main content area is going to be called main padding 15 pixels. Background color. You can see that's what that color is. This is the main area right here. And in a previous tutorial, I showed you how to set up this guy, meaning how to set up these boxes and how to get this to float right. I'm actually going to show you how to do that here again, though. These are all divs. That's all they are. I'm just handling some positioning right now. So there's the main content area. That's all I need to do to make that go where I need it to go. And then I'm going to have login. And login is this guy over here. I've gotten a lot of questions in regards to how you put code inside of these divs. So this tutorial kind of is going to answer numerous questions that I've gotten eventually anyway. So I'm changing my padding on the bottom to 15 pixels. I'm going to set my border to none. Background color width is going to be 200 pixels. Text align is going to be set for left. And the reason why it's floating to the right side of the screen is because of this line of code right there, float right. And then I'm going to give it a margin, 10 pixels on the left. And on the right, I'm going to give it a margin of 5 pixels. And a margin on the top of 5 pixels. And that is the end of the entire header. So I have to close off my style section. And then I'm going to close this off right like that. And again, this is called header.html. And that's it. So that's what I'm gonna, that's what makes up the way this is all styled. It's all in one place. I'm gonna use it at site wide across the board. So when I wanna come in here and change all this stuff, it'll be extremely easy to do. Now I'm gonna create another file called mbregister.php. And what do I gotta do? Come in here include the header file that I just created. So all that code's gonna instantly go in there automatically, along with all the sessions being handled and the database connection and everything. Then we can keep everything a little bit neater, go right into the body section, and I'm gonna define the header. 
which is the top thing where it says message port. And all this guy is going to do is it's going to have an H2 tag in it for now. And it's going to say message board. And I'm going to close off that div. Then I'm going to create a new div. And this is important. If you want a div to be float right, it has to be the topmost div. So if you had this and then you tried to float right, it would mess up everything. So this has to go first if you want it to then float right and then have this pop into place. And this guy's called login. And here, putting in a paragraph tag, and I'm going to call my PHP code. And I'll welcome the new user in this place if they are logged in. If they're not, then I won't, like I did on the right side of the screen. Currently not logged in over there. So I'm just going to echo, and then I'm going to check if a session is active. This is how you call sessions in PHP. Called first name. So this means that they currently have a connection, or you have some information anyway stored on their computer. What I'm going to do is call this session array and print out their first name to the screen. And then I want to close off my H4 tag. And then what I want to do, I'm going to scroll this up first off so you can see it. I'm going to display different links depending upon if they're logged in or not. So what I'm going to do here is call is set again. This just tells me if user ID is set for this person that's accessing this site. And then I'm also going to take a substring by calling the substring function of some information stored in a server array. If you call php underscore self, what it'll do is it'll pop back exactly the page that they currently are on. So I'm going to create a log out screen later on, so I want to make sure they're not on that. Otherwise, whenever they jump to log out and try to log out, it'll automatically log them in again. So what I'm going to do is take the last 10 characters away from the current site that they're on. That's what the negative 10 does. And then I'm going to check and make sure that that is not equal to log out.php. So that's what I'm doing there. I hope this is making sense. This tutorial totally is going to continue or stop depending upon whether you guys tell me you like it. Because this is totally a new format. It's something that I was told to try out. So if it works, I continue making them. If it doesn't, I stop. And these are just going to be links that are going to pop up. Like I have register login to your account and forgot password. So those are all there. All right. Else. If they're not logged in, as I obviously am not based off of what's on the side of the screen here, I want to echo out different links. So I'm going to put in ah reference is equal to, give them the option to register for an account, allow them to log in, or if they forgot their password, I'm going to give them a way to get a hold of it. Okay, and then that's all the options that are needed there. So I'm going to close off that section, and then I'm going to close off this paragraph that I created. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the actual main content area. Well, before I do that, I'm going to close off my div, and then I'm actually going to create the form part, what this guy is right down here. And then I'm going to jump in later and fill in some additional information in the next tutorial. This is going to be register forward slash h1. It's an h1 tag. Then I'm going to create a form, and the action is actually going to be to call this web page that I'm currently creating itself, and it's going to handle all of the information that's sent to it. Then I'm going to create field set, just put that little box around the whole thing. Then I'm going to create a paragraph, then I'm going to bold it, and I'm going to say that I want them to enter their first name, then put input type is equal to text. I'm going to give it a name equal to first name, so I'll be able to get a hold of this information. Give it a size equal to 20. Give it a max length equal to 20. Of course, if you plan on having people that have names longer than that, then of course you'd want to change that. And its value is going to be equal to, make a call to PHP, if is set post, meaning that this has been submitted already. It's just going to print what they submitted in there, make sure that it's set up and then close off that PHP code, right like that. The next one's going to be almost identical, because it's going to be last name. So last name, come in here, put last name, and let's chalk this up to 30, last name, and max length, which take up that up to 30, and that's fine. Then we're going to ask them for their email address. Yeah, let's move that up there. So this is going to be email. This is going to be email. I'm going to take the max length up to 40, change this to email, and then change this to 40. Okay, so everything's fine there. Same thing over and over and over again. 
Then this guy right here is going to be the username that they are going to want to use here on this system. And I'm going to change this to password just for added security. I know this is not common. And of course, you can change this code however you'd like. Doesn't matter to me. I'm going to have the maximum size for the user ID is 20. And then plug in user ID right there. And then change this to 20. And then type in user ID right there. Okay. The only thing I'm going to change here is I'm going to just dump this right out. And then I'm going to use small here, even though you're not supposed to. Actually, let's just copy this right like that. Doink. Must contain a letter, both cases, minimum length of eight characters and a number. And let's just do that. And then I'm going to have them enter a password two times right like that. And I'm actually going to give it the name password one, 20 in length, max length 20. Actually, you know what? Let's not force that. Just get rid of that altogether. Let it be as long as they want it to be. And then inside of small, guess what? I'm just going to copy this again, cheat. And then everything else will just stay the same as we got right there. And then for the confirmation password, going to change that to confirm password. Type password. Change this to password two. Everything else there looks pretty good, except I'm not going to need any of this information. And then I'm going to jump in here and put the CAPTCHA system in there. And this is real simple. Whenever you get this, you're just going to want to type in your public key, everything exactly as I'm doing right here. And this public key is going to look something like this. It's just going to be a bunch of rambling nonsense. And then you're going to type in that, put that there, and I'll provide a link to that CAPTCHA thing, except it's a lot longer than that. And there you are. That's all you have to type in for the CAPTCHA system. Pretty easy, huh? And then field set. That's the thing that draws this box around this little form we got here. Div, align, center. And I'm just going to create a submit button here and give it a name of submit and a value equal to register. That's what will appear on the button itself. And then close off that div. And then here I'm going to store a hidden value. The name of it's going to be submitted and the value is going to be equal to true. And I'm going to be able to use this to know when the form has been submitted. And then I'm going to close off that form and then close off that div and then close off the body, and then close off the HTML. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take all of this information that is entered here in this registration box, and, or these registration boxes, scrub it to make sure everything's nice and secure, and then create the new user on the database. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Otherwise, till next time.